Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a good day. The sun is out again, which is great. So today I just wanted to talk to you about um, the things that can impact your thyroid hormones. So basically we're looking here at what's impacting and hindering the conversion of T4 thyroxine into triadothyronine, which is T3. So basically yesterday I explained that your, um, so your GP will be looking at your thyroid panel. And so part of that is looking at what's going on with thyroid stimulating hormone and your free T4, which is really critical because we want to see is the body signaling the, the pituitary to ask the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. And if that is the case, we want to know also what's actually happening with that thyroid hormone. Is there sufficient levels of thyroid hormone in the body? So at the moment, the GP test doesn't really tell us if there's enough active thyroid hormone in the body, but we do know whether there's enough T4, which is the inactive form. So in order for your body to actually convert the inactive form, which is your T4, into T3, there's a couple of things that need to be in place. You know, it needs specific you know, raw materials, but more importantly, it also actually needs to make sure that your body is in a good, healthy place. So I just quickly want to run through some of the things that can impact that conversion. So firstly, the first thing is gut health. So all of you who know me well will know that I'm really passionate about the gut. And it is really the epicenter of your health. So if your gut isn't working well, then it is definitely going to be impacting your thyroid hormone. So when we think about the gut, we kind of think about the fact that around 80% of our immune system is located in the gut. And these beneficial bacteria and microbes that are working tirelessly to kind of pr provide the foundation for your immune system, they're actually also involved in ensuring that you're converting your T4 into T3. So when there is, you know, enough, when when, you, when your microbes are in balance, then that process is going to happen without any effort. The problem kicks in, and we see this really often, is when people have dysbiosis. So dysbiosis is, is a case where people have an imbalance in bacteria in the gut. And when we see this imbalance, it's going to directly impact how much of this conversion is actually taking place. So we might then see people present with things like fatigue, weight gain, or difficulty losing weight, or bloating or digestive issues like constipation um, or mood imbalances or just feeling you know that they can't sleep or having hormonal problems as well so it's critical that when we look at what's going on in the thyroid we also need to make sure that we're looking at what's going on in the gut because if there's not a, a really good micro healthy microbiome in place then it's going to be impacting that conversion from t4 to t3 Furthermore, in the gut, it's also critical that obviously you're digesting absorb, you know, and absorbing and assimilating all your nutrients. So if you haven't got the right digestive enzymes, if you're not eating in the right way and, you know, being mindful around how you're eating and chewing your food and if you don't have sufficient bile, that's all going to be impacting what's going on with your thyroid hormone. So it's really critical that your gut health is optimal. And when, when it isn't, we can see that that's then directly resulting in less active thyroid being available in the body and for all the cells to use so that you have sufficient energy, that your metabolism is working well, that you can regulate your temperature that your mood's good and your weight management and all that is in place and working healthy. The second thing um, that's going to be impacting your conversion from T4 to T3 is stress. So this is a bit of a strange topic because for all of us, it's almost impossible to avoid stress. You know, we're not living back 100 years ago where stress was very different. We're facing stress on a daily basis in different forms, whether it's our mobile phone, our laptops, whether it's the kids, whether it's just constant. And so it's almost impossible to get away from that chronic stress environment. So whilst our body our bodies are really, you know, hardwired to deal with acute stress, so looking at, you know, you being able to run out of out of the way if a bus comes and it before it hits you, you can jump out of the way and your body can deal with that very acute stress. But actually, when we're dealing with stress ongoing, what's happening is that it's actually impacting how our thyroid, how that conversion between T4 and T3 is taking place. So what we see when someone is stressed, that, that, that the body is actually taking the T4 and rather than turning it into T3, it's actually turning it into reverse T3. So reverse T3 is actually exactly the same chemical structure as T3, but it's not active. 
So it will block up receptors in the body and it will mean that there's less available T3 for your body to use. So this is one of the reasons when we are dealing with thyroid disorders, we really need to have a look and see what's going on with someone's stress levels. How, how can we put things in place to mitigate stress and manage stress? Um, and look at lifestyle factors. But at the same time, it's also really important that we look at the adrenal function and see what's going on there. Because very often people with thyroid issues have got some, some form of adrenal fatigue or something going on with their adrenals as well. The third thing to look at is your liver. So I think I kind of like to think of the liver as, you know, as kind of your super organ really, because it's just amazing what it does on a daily basis. But one of the many functions that it's involved with daily is to make sure that it's actually converting this T4 to T3. So whilst your thyroid production is happening in the thyroid, that conversion from T4 to T3 is mostly happening in the liver. So if your liver function isn't optimal, then that's going to have a direct impact on what's going on with this conversion. And that, you know, is potentially going to mean that you have less thyroid active thyroid hormone available for your body to use and and therefore you might be presenting with these hypothyroid symptoms so how do i know that someone's liver isn't functioning very well when i'm working with them in clinic um or online is that um you know we can see when someone's got heavy periods they've got pms especially women here tender breasts they have ir you know an irregular cycle they might have headaches they might have some acne or some um you know, hormonal acne as well. Um, they might have liver spots on their skin or when I look at their tongue, I can tell it. And also by just looking at some of the facial, you know, some of the facial marks on their face will give me an indication that there's stuff going on with their liver. And I do find it fascinating as humans that we're always quite keen in January to do a, you know, a dry January and a detox and all that kind of stuff. We'll go off to Spain and do a juice cleanse. But these are simple things that we can do on a daily basis just to kind of keep our liver in touch. You know, we can work on making sure we've got enough water going in, having some lemon, making sure we've got coriander and parsley going into our diet and just really focusing on foods that's going to support your liver health, like cruciferous vegetables and you know, th that's going to help, especially with estrogen metabolism and supporting those pathways. So that's another thing. If your liver health isn't working well, then you're going to see a direct impact on what's happening with this conversion from T4 to T3. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is diet. So if your diet isn't great, so if you've got a traditional, you know, as they call it, you know, a SAD diet, which is a standard, standard American diet or Western diet, it's pretty high in processed and refined foods, which is going to mean it's high in sugar, which is going to mean it's pro-inflammatory. But those things will all be impacting your body because it will add to stress, which means there's going to be less conversion from T4 to T3, as already explained. But also it's going to be lacking us with the key nutrients. So we know we need selenium for this conversion because, the, as I explained yesterday, the enzymes responsible for converting the T4 to T3 are selenium based. So we need selenium in order for that conversion to take place. So if your food's not going to be rich in selenium, you're going to be struggling. In the same breath, you also need zinc. And magnesium is also a really important mineral that most of us are deficient in. So just looking at those three key nutrients, you know, if they're not in place, and that's going to be impacting that conversion from T4 to T3. And in the same breath, also, you know, if you're if you're kind of following a weight loss package or plan and you're on a low calorie diet, then you're also likely to see that that's going to impact what's going on because we know that when we have um, low calorie diets or there's periods where we're kind of going through starvation or less food, that is going to put the body under stress and that stress again is going to fuel that reverse T3. So those are just some simple, you know, some simple thoughts around things that can be impacting the conversion of T4 to T3 and things that you can be looking at. So obviously you want to mitigate your stress, you want to focus on your gut health, you want to make sure that you're eating the rainbow and a variety of, you know, different vegetables and fiber, fiber, fibers on a daily basis to support your gut health, but also your immune system. And you want to make sure that you really limit your sugar intake because otherwise that's going to be directly feeding into the bad bacteria in your gut, which will bring that imbalance, which means there's less beneficial bacteria available to convert that T4 to T3. And you really want to look at nutrients that's going to be, you know, anti-inflammatory rather than pro-inflammatory. Pro so those are just a few things that you can focus on to help with that conversion. Um, but I think it's really important, especially since we're not looking at it from um, 
conventional medicine to see actually what's going on with that conversion that we are really aware that we need to kind of pay attention to how we're living, what we're eating, how we're eating, and you know how we can mitigate and minimize stress. Um, so I hope you found that helpful. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. Bye.